Welcome to the Nerds in Christ podcast, where we level up our faith by finding the gospel in our favorite fandoms. Welcome back to the Nerds in Christ podcast. Ow. <laughs> it's me, Mike. Who do I have with me? Cameron. Great. And Chris. Cool. Steven. I try to make this as awkward as possible in the beginning. I think I have lip. You do a yeah. really <laughs> good job. <Thanks. laughs> Episode 20. Aslan is on the move. That was pretty good. That sounded like Mr. Beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Beaver. Mr. Beaver. So we're talking about Chronicles of Narnia. So what is your favorite character or book? Mr. Tummins. Tumnus. Tumnus. Nailed it. Mainly <laughs> just because he plays Professor X on the newer. Is that the only reason why? And he's pretty cool. He's like, very cool. Like when he's in the cave and he's like, I turned you in, but I regret it. Now go home. Yeah. The great character right there. Well, I I only know the movies and haven't seen them in several years. Mm-hmm. And I was going to say Tumnus, but obviously. You can't say can't. Tumnus. Yeah. I was going to say Aslan just because, you know, he's a lion. That's too easy. But he's a lion. That's a lion. like saying, That's who's your true. favorite character in the Bible? Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's the most <laughs> correct <laughs> answer. I mean, you know, because I mean. Steven, you got one? Yeah, Aslan the lion. The king. Is it? Okay. Well, many of you may not know Reaper Jeep. He's a mouse. Do you know Reaper Jeep? Is he? I think he's is he in the movies. Yeah, yeah. he's in the books and the movies. He's a tiny mouse who has yeah. the heart of a lion and uh, sword fights, and he's the best. What's yeah. the first actual book? The Magician's Nephew. That. So I started it's reading that with Strange. It is, but that's such a good book. It's like how yeah, it starts. It's very deep. Uh, all of the books are really cool. Like that. They start. Books. Fun fact: The Silver Chair, The Last Battle. They're the Horse and His Boy is my favorite book. So fun fact: C.S. Lewis, of course. He's the most reluctant convert, they say. That was actually, I changed up the notes. That's level one. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I didn't read the notes. <laughs> so, well, I, I didn't send this to y'all, but in, it, we're oh. getting into level one now, Inklings. So this is a group that Tolkien, Lewis, and three uh, three or four <clears throat> all other, Oxford. Other Oxford teachers started. And in the beginning, uh, Lewis was a devout atheist. But he was mainly because of his background and his family and stuff. And they were friends with Tolkien and a few others. And it wasn't like Tolkien and them debated. It was just him being him, Mm -hmm. you know, and they would talk. The only reason they started this group is because they would all read each other's um, things and different things like that. Like he would read. um, I think The Hobbit is what he was reading them at the time. And then C.S. Lewis had a lot of poetry and different things like that, which is really neat. And something I really like from that, and it's funny because you look at, so when I'm going to school, when I actually start hopefully back in January, if I was to do an apologetics class and get my uh, bachelor's in apologetics, one of the main classes I have to take is C.S. Lewis and his writings because he's known to be, he's known to be one of the the greatest apologetic Mm -hmm. authors of our generation. I think with that, you just need to be really good at analogies. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, truly. And, and it's funny to see. Because you can, you can relate to so many people if you really know how to do analogies right. And I'm going to throw this out. I have been, I, I've wa- I've been watching The Most Reluctant Convert. It, it's about C.S. Lewis's conversion and his cool. first life um, and the writings of. Where are you watching that? It's on uh, the Great American Pure Flex Network. Oh, okay. I'll give you my login. Okay. But it, it's so true. Just say it now. No. <laughs> yeah. But you see, um, you see like his struggle. Like, even though Tolkien, yeah, was trying to point him to Christ, it, it, they never batted heads about it too much. It wasn't that Tolkien or C.S. Lewis is like, no, you got to stop talking about Jesus or we're not going to be friends. They loved each other enough that they were like best friends. Mm-hmm. It'd be like if one of us, like if I wasn't non believer and Michael was, how we would talk. I know we have friends that way that we're really good friends with, and we do our best to point them to Christ. I wish I had a couple friends, but almost because in, in the Bible Belt, I don't really know many people that don't like Jesus. In the words of Tim Delina, who's the pastor at a big church in New York, he said he had lunch with a, a new tenant in his building, and he said that that tenant said he was agnostic, and he said he jumped for joy. And the guy's like, "What?" He said, "You didn't say you were an atheist, because if you would have, you would have been lying." Mm. Because he said an sure. atheist is lying about not believing in anything. Yeah. And he said, but an agnostic realizes that there was something. Yeah. 
I just not. I don't want anything to do with it. So, level one inklings, the group around you, the friends around you, our iron sharpens iron. That's one of the biggest things I think. Um, you as a believer, or you know, whatever, you, you need to have people around you. We say that almost every podcast because it's so true. A hundred percent. Because if you don't, you we're there to pick each other up when we fall. Well, I was just thinking of this too. Last podcast, I didn't say anything, but I was just thinking it. Like the closer you get to a friend, the more, the easier you can tell if something's off. Like I can tell something's off with just about any one of you. Cause I know you so well, I, I know your mannerisms, your, just the way you carry yourself. And if something's off in any way, I'm like, all right, what's wrong? That's like the other day at work. And you're like, Hey, I'm going to tell you something and it might hurt your feelings. And I was yeah. like, no, tell me. And yeah. you tell me and I'm like, thank you. And you're yeah. like, I knew that was coming. Yeah. I do that, huh? <laughs> it's hard <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> like it's hard for me because i'm like i don't really want to and he's like you need to and i'm like i don't want to i think that's like i think and that's a, that's just a test to how you know like how close you like how strong your friendship is with someone like yeah just that you can like there's a guy i work with like we've only been working together about two months but just in the the similarities that we have and the interests that we have like we've kind of like grown pretty close pretty quick and like it's just one of those things like oh man it's like Something's up, like, you know, and we're with you guys, you know, it's just like that camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And having a friend that you can check them. Absolutely. Like, hey, man. And like, you know, you should be humble enough and open enough to be like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll receive it. Sure. And it's something like I texted you the other day about covenant friendships. Mm -hmm. So our, 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 our friendships on this earth is to be a covenant kind of friendship, true friendships. It's something in society today, it's not lasting. You ask a millennial, hey, w let's be friends in 20 years. And they're like, oh, I don't know what I'll be doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we have to set time. Like I know that the people in this room with me, I'll be friends with years down the line. Mm -hmm. I know Michael and um, our family's relationship will be there for generations. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just something I know. Like that's, that's like people who say, do you know you're saved? I know that I know that I know. Like it, it's just that covenant because we don't, we don't white, we don't wash it out as something temporary. Mm -hmm. We're there to continue to equip. And that's what discipleship is. It's you're there in the hard times. You're there in the good times. And you're there to know like, Hey, in 20 years from now, Let's get to coffee, but it's something you have to make time for. Yeah, that's kind of like in marriage. A marriage is another covenant that, in, in which we got to look at because it's the same with friendship. Of course, yeah. marriage is a little deeper, but you have to put the time in. Mm -hmm. Friendships are the same way. You can't. My cousin, who's a pastor, said it really good. He said he was talking about his wife and kind of our relationship with Christ. So if his wife does all the talking and he says nothing, how will that relationship be? If Christ does all the talking and we don't do talking back, how will that relationship be? Or if we do all the talking in our prayer time and don't listen enough, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So going back to actually the podcast before, um, but in real time, we were just talking about it. Um, having the mindset in a friendship of generations, like you're talking about in the, the, um, the whole idea of like, man, I hope, we build a close enough friendship that our kids will hang out together. Um, that's really cool. That would be really neat. Okay. And a caveat on that. I did, I'm not smart enough to think of all this. This comes yeah. from, I, we've plugged them before, but it's the dad tire podcast. If your yep. dad or husband or just a man out there, definitely give them a listen. And, and it was called covenant friendships. And it really will change your perspective of what we think, because in today's society, we're taught something that's not true. Mm. Level two. The wardrobe. You guys ready to enter the wardrobe? Of course. <laughs> I don't know what that was. So it, it's really <laughs> with with all the different books. There's there's always a different way into Narnia, which is really really cool. And actually, the wardrobe comes from a piece of fruit from the first book that was planted in our world, grew into a tree, and then he cut the tree down and made a wardrobe with it. So it's like magical. So it's just interesting, and, and it that goes on with many different um, stories, <clears throat> but it's neat because um, much like the only way they get into Narnia or the way they get, they get into Narnia is different ways. Jesus never performed the same miracle twice, 
which is very interesting. He he did perform the same miracle, he like giving sight, yeah, giving sight to the blind, but he did it in different ways every time, mm-hmm. and most of the time it was just weird. Like in Mark, he sticks his finger in the guy's ears, touches his tongue, and then spits. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Can you he, see?" And then he spits on the ground, makes mud, yeah, and rubs it off the eyes. Well, well, I was gonna. He he does that the spitting he does that in one in Mark multiple times before he can see perfect. Mm-hmm. And I was listening to it while I was driving the other day, and I was like, "This is good," because so many times we ask for a miracle or a blessing or something, and it's not instantaneous. And we're like, "Oh man, it didn't work." And Jesus is like, "No, don't leave. Like I'm not done. Like I'm working on it." But you look at God too. That's what He did to Abraham. Yeah. Your 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 descendants will inherit the promised land you know, yeah he we, never saw it but we as people in this society are conditioned for that you know like like what do you call it? microwave you microwave generation yeah. we're conditioned for instantaneous cell phone yeah because yeah. i can look up anything and it'll be right here all instantaneous knowledge. instantaneous gratification yeah. where you know think now you go into uh i mean a fast food restaurant right you go to a drive-thru you just you say two words i'm with number one you know number one Mm-hmm. Yeah, you hey, could just say two words to somebody or one, two, one word, one. Yeah, go through the drive thru They hand it, and they 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 just they don't even have to even say anything. Sometimes, they just sometimes I notice they won't even look you in the eye, which bugs just, the heck out of they me. They just take your card, swipe it, you get your seat, you walk. They hand you the bag, and you're done. But at the yeah. same time, they're doing something. So you're handing them their money. They're taking the next order. Yeah. Oh, this will be X, Y, and Z. And, there, and there's nothing personal, and no. it's just all about like how quick can you get it and it, you, like literally you go from like nothing to having the food in your car in like yeah. two minutes that's why you look at when the disciples broke bread with each other it was an intimate setting where yeah. it, it took relationship the, the meal was over a quarter yeah, of I mean, hours they would eat with their hands too they, well, they which would. is fun but it, 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 it's an intimate relationship they're where all laying you have, down they're laying down they have to talk to one another because that sounds the, like my kind of party the food's being prepared and one course will come out at a time. Yeah. And just how many people would have the patience for that anymore? <laughs> and Lord, you know, give to, us patience. Yeah. Oh, that's something too. People don't want to pray for patience because they think it's going to bring something bad against them. Oh, it's like, yeah. why? Like that patience Jesus, is good. I prayed for patience and Jesus gave me kids. Mm-hmm. But. Help me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I was dad and hard today. We're going on a level. Well, we're on level two. What are we talking about? Narnia, patience. The order of. Yeah. A wardrobe. How do we get to patience? It's a virtue. I don't know. Yeah. So we're going into uh, oh, the the whole healing of the man, patience. We're getting into Narnia many different ways, but we get into Narnia anyway. And it, what's really cool, again, about going into Narnia is that Aslan says this a couple different times, but going into Narnia, he's trying to teach you something. They're not just ever, they're not ever just going into Narnia to have fun and have an adventure. They're going in because they're dealing with something and they need to learn something, which is really neat. And so when they, they're in a war torn England, the first set of kids, um, Peter, Susan, Lucy, and Edmund, they're in a war torn uh, area or the war torn England. Is it world war one? Two. They're in the Blitzkrieg. Yeah. Is it two? Mm-hmm. And they're sent off to their uncle, who their uncle was actually in book one, um, Eustace. No, not Eustace. That's that's in Don Tritter. Anyway, their uncle is the guy, the kid from book one, which is really neat. Oh yeah. So the magician's nephew. Mm-hmm. He's the nephew of the crazy magician guy. Book one is wild. It is. By the way, it's good book. It's wild. But anyway, um, they're sent to him and he kind of knows what the wardrobe is and can, he kind of knows what's going on with the kids. He knows they're going to Narnia, which is really neat. Um, and so they go into it and what's, what's really interesting is that like later, um, I think I have this in later notes, but I'll just get into it now that, uh, later Susan and Edmund who are the older siblings can't go back into Narnia that's their last time in Narnia because they aged out and how so many times like maturity wise we think we've aged out of a lesson or something God's trying to teach us when it's the opposite Mm -hmm. and we need to go back into Narnia and learn our lesson so escaping going into Narnia um they're escaping from their harsh reality or whatever kind of trauma they're going into and so something we've talked about a couple of times is like, what are you escaping from? What are you escaping to? And 
is it Jesus? Is it the Bible? Is it your church? Is it a community or is it something else? Mm-hmm. And that's, it's something I, I try to ask myself a lot when I'm like trying to, you know, watch star Wars, Ahsoka or something like that. I'm like, okay, do I really need this? Or am I trying to escape from thing? Cause I'm trying to um, procrastinate from doing something else or like a, a video game or something like that. Is it something I'm trying to like, Oh, Mm-hmm. Like true, like be true to yourself and ask those things. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? You know, why am I scrolling my phone so much? That's the big do one. I need to go? You know, my kids are being quiet. I need to go make sure they're still alive. I was, I tested. I was doing that today. Yeah, it's like, what are they doing? I was like hiding somewhere in, in the kitchen, like scrolling. And then they came in. I was like, oh, I'm getting a snack. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it is I'm just truthful. But it goes back to something we talked about. Person won't hear this. I'll be fine. But it goes back to something we talk about too. We can do that in um in a biblical sense where we throw up little prayers of like, Lord, I need you right now. Lord, give me patience. Lord, help yeah. me. And, and we can escape from our reality through that. Yeah. And give it to God. Because the world's tough. You look at John sixteen thirty three, I know we bring this scripture up a lot, but he says you will face turmoil in this world. Yeah. But take heart, for I have overcome it. Jesus is saying this the night before he gets hung on a cross, mm-hmm. N- knowing he's going to face turmoil in this world. Yeah. He still tells him, hey, take heart because I've overcome it and I'm about to overcome it. Yeah. So when you're facing turmoil, when you're facing that tension, um, you're all good. Mm-hmm. You'd be fine. I think, company. I think it goes back to <clears throat> uh, something that Stephen said earlier about our humanity, you know, and then asking, you know, instead of you know, procrastinating or using your time to scroll through a phone or, you know, your video games or whatever it is, as opposed to, you know, taking it to God is that's our humanity said we're like, and I think, I think especially for men. And I know particularly for me, like we, it's just that part of us that we don't like asking for help. Yeah. Cause absolutely. We're, we're stubborn. It's like, Oh no, I, I could take care of this. And I know I, I'm particularly guilty of it. Like I just, you know, like, I was like, no, I got this. I can do this. And, and I think that's, you know, one of the reasons, you know, a lot of us are like, okay, well, let's not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn to God today. Like, I know, I know what I'm doing. Like, I can, mm-hmm. I can take this. But, you know, and it goes back to something I think we talked about in the last episode about, you know, it's giving him, you know, giving him the control, like letting him take the reins, mm-hmm. you know. Jesus, take the wheel. Well, this is something. Yeah. I goofy song, but very true. This is something that uh, our pastor and I were talking about at our small group. Uh, it was kind of when we get in trouble. It's when we, we've we gone through something where the Lord's helped us through it, and we're like, okay, God, I got it this time. Mm. And it's so true because not every – like you can go through the same situation over and over and over again and get complacent and think, okay, I know what God did last time so I can emulate it. When that's not the case, not yeah. every outcome is going to be the same for every situation mm. where we have to seek God for our guidance. Lord, your will be done, not my own. Yeah. Lord, may I decrease so you can increase. May I take up my cross and follow you. It's one of those things where we have to fully submit to every situation Yeah. because it might look mundane in our world, mm-hmm. but in the scheme of eternity, like one day now in the scheme of eternity is nothing small, but at the same time that one day now can make or break your eternity. Yeah. Well, mm. That's good. Cause it, eternity is a long time to be wrong. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. That made me think of too, um, you know, when you're going through a situation and you've kind of been through it before, you're like, all right, I know what to do. It made me think of, uh, um, one of the biblical stories of David where uh, I can't remember the exact verse or, the names, but he's on a war path with all his buddies, his warriors, and his one of the cities gets attacked and all their women and children are taken. And um, everybody's like, all right, let's go get him. And Dave's like, hang on. And he goes and consults the high priest, the, the prophet, that kind of thing, prays to God. Hey, God, what do I do? And obviously you're going to think, David, what do you like? Go get the, the people back. Go fight those guys. But he's like, no, hang on. I'm going to pray to God first. And that's, that's a lot of times, like you're saying, so many times we kind of go through a very similar situation and we try to use that past, um, that past victory, that past, um, knowledge pray, prayer, I want to say, cause sometimes you pray for something and you get through it and then you go through a very similar thing and you don't pray about it and man, you're going to get hit. Mm-hmm. 
So just give, give us our daily bread back to that prayer of just every single day. And the thing about the wardrobe and Narnia in itself, they would go in and time would basically stop on this side. Yep. Yeah. And that, this sounds weird, but when you're in the Bible, when you're in tune with the spirit, sometimes what feels like an eternity is only a few minutes and you've learned so much. I know there's been times where I've been studying. I'm like, man, I've had to be at the seat for hours mm -hmm. and I look and it's like 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's like, um, if you don't think you have time for it, God can make time for it. Mm. And that's sometimes an excuse we use. We're, we're such a society now oh, based on time. I'm going to step on your toes. Oh, I'm late to work. I'll read my Bible later. Yep. Oh, I've, I know. I've done that. And, I've done that. And sometimes I'll read like the verse of the day or I listen to a real quick uh, daily nerd devo. Mm -hmm. It's like four minutes, five minutes. Usually, and almost every morning, even if I don't read my Bible, I'll, re I'll listen to that on my way to work. It's usually just. So fellow nerds, nerds in Christ, daily nerd devo uh, podcast. It's like five minutes. It's epic. And so you guys are morningers and I'm a nighter. Yeah. You know, and I've I've done that same thing too. Like, man, I'm really tired. I just want to, and I'm I'm a really bad creature of habit. Like, I got to do this, then I got to do this, then I watch TV, then I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, like, my time studying is like while my wife and Aaron, uh, or my my wife and Kaylee. I mean, your wife and Aaron. I apologize. Hang Mom. on, Stephen. Aaron is my wife. For those of you other. <laughs> Aaron's my wife, and then my daughter Kaylee. When they're get when they uh, do their bedtime routine, you know, and which is hours, I'm it, sure. It's, it's <laughs> every you have bit a of lot two of study. solid hours. <laughs> you have a uh, lot of study time. That's my study time. That's Sweet. when I'm. I got you know. I, I got my book. I got I got my phone, and I'm. That's my study time. Then after my study time, I'll. That's that's my television time. Then I go mm -hmm. to bed. You know. Nice. But uh, sometimes I'm just like, man, I'm just so tired. I just want to lay here. I mm -hmm. just. I'm just turning on, and sometimes I get upset, and I'm like, I'm just turning on the TV. But the, 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 then there's you get mad at yourself. Then I get mad at myself, and then yeah. and then my whole night gets screwed up, and I'm not relaxed. I'm tossing and turning. I'm like, oh crap, you know, I'm mad, I'm irritated. Reading reading at night is very just so good. It makes me sleepy. It makes me sleep better. I like uh, see I what love, I, I love reading. At I, night. I, I read Stephen to read. I read and I listen. Like uh, yeah, cool. I listen on my phone. You know, because of the Bible. Oh, I, like I the Bible. I, 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 I love doing And I read at the same And time. you read? I've never done that. It, it's a... I follow, like I follow it. Follow along. The, yeah. yeah. Oh, like you read cool. a lot. That's like, that's one of those studies that say if you listen, read, like listen, look at and read at the same time, you'll better understand it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, they say a habit takes 21 days to form. Mm -hmm. So you have to do something 21 days in a row for it to become an actual habit for you. Yeah. And it's like... Why people? That's one reason people like write down verses. The more you write down something, the more you retain it. Yeah, that's true for me for sure. Mm -hmm. If I write something down, I'll remember it. Mm. All right, level three: sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. Mm. Yeah, we are all heirs of the kingdom of heaven because um, we're adopted by Christ, His Father. What's wrong, Cameron? None of these match up. No, it's all right. It's all good. <laughs> It's all good. We're all sons of, uh, because in Narnia, it's really cool because you can be a king and queen of Narnia, but there's only one high king, and that's Aslan or Jesus. Well, really, it's his dad who's high king, but I think that in Narnia, they call him the emperor. Mm -hmm. emperor. Emperor Aslan. Over the sea or something. And it's funny because you look at Aslan, he is the picture of Jesus in Narnia. Yeah. he He's the lion of Judah to them. Yeah. And it's so cool because the evil, the white queen or white witch or whatever, is trying to just destroy his kingdom, make it winter all the time. And Aslan, always winter, never Christmas. That's sad. So uh, we are adopted heirs, and in Ephesians one five, it says he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will. And I think we've talked about predestination before. Right. Yeah. That's a, this is a very it's touchy. A, it's subject. a very, the best way I think we came up with it was the game. The video game is um, all made. The side quests, the main quests are all there and you're put in place and then you can have free reign. You have free will. Yeah. You're, you're predestined to, to beat the game. Yeah. It's up to you whether you want to do it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I, I think is a really easy and beautiful way to look at it. A hundred percent. 
we're blowing people's minds. Whoa. If I said this in the Skyrim. theology class, I, I'd get looked at like I'm a witch. You <gasps> know, that's what we do here. So, and also in uh, Romans eight fifteen, it's also bright in my Bible. For you did not receive the spirit <laughs> of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Mm. So we don't have a spirit of slavery. We have a spirit of adoption as sons to call him Abba, which Cameron, it's one of your favorite things. And you talk about it while I look up the next verse. Oh, Abba. So yeah. there's two mentions of it in the Bible. Uh, Paul and Jesus actually say, and it's a, a super intimate version of father. It can loosely be translated to daddy, but we're not going to get into that. It, it's just a very, it's intimate, a very intimate way of saying father. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a lot, like a small child to yes. their to their father, and it's something I am a big proponent of. Which is cool because nine times out of ten, the baby will say "dada" first because it's easier to say that. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if "abba" is the same thing. Ooh. If "abba" is easier to say in Elvish, it's "ada." Ah, look at you. You know, I know, I know some languages. <laughs> Just a few, fiction, fiction or other ones. But I don't know. It's just something I've really loved because of the intimacy. And it's something we're all called. Uh, class, Michael and I got the privilege uh, through Dave. Shout out to Dave. Shout out to Dave. <laughs> um, to attend, one of the speakers was talking about adoption. Mm -hmm. So in Jewish law, in law today, if you are adopted, you cannot be written out of a will. But a natural born child can be. But if you're adopted, you can't. So when we're adopted into Christ, we can't be it's we can't, we can't Christ, lose it. because yeah. you know Christ chose us the same we chose him. Mm -hmm. mm. And we can't be written out of that final will that he's given us. Because he loved God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. And he sent his son into the world to save it and not to condemn it. I used to use that logic on my brother and sister. I mean just like a Galatians 3 uh, so, uh, along with the 326 so, so in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith and I want, I'm going to expand on through to 28 if that's okay do yeah, it man do it, bro. Okay, so 26 so in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ Neither it, there is neither Jew nor Gentile slave nor free male or female for you are all one in Christ Jesus amen and I, I think it's so cool whenever they say something about being clothed. Yeah. You, but it's, it's, it is sim symbolic and metaphorical and all that kind of stuff. But like, you look like Jesus. Yeah. Clothed. You, you, put on, you put on that outside representation. Yeah. So, so I, I say it as like, it's your favorite, uh, silly nerdy t-shirt. This is my favorite silly nerdy t-shirt. So, t -shirt so when you put that on, I know that you love Sesame Street. I wore this to get our pizza tonight, and three people talked to me about it. I love wearing this shirt because every time they're like, "That is really cool. What is that?" And I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. Something we do. It's like, let me tell you a little story. So, so saying that, like, when you put on Christ, when you truly accept and live through Him, bear your cross, that sort of thing, people will notice. Hey, there's something different about that. Like, yeah, what? if you wear it, what are you? What are talk. you wearing? What are you wearing? It's like a like a fashion show kind of thing. What are you wearing tonight? I'm wearing Jesus. That's what I'm wearing. Straight up. What's up? I don't know. It kinda... I, I wrote down Luke 10, uh, 19, but it's not the verse I thought it was. So moving on, what'd you, what you got? Oh, it's for the next level Turkish delight. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah, we're good. So next level is Turkish delight, but we're going to take a quick break. So we'll be back in a few. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you're listening to, please like and share this podcast with your friends and family. Check out our merch where we have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Continue this topic on our Facebook page with other kingdom-minded nerds. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Nerds in Christ podcast where we talk about <coughs> Turkish delight. That's what level we're on right now. So in every book, there's some kind of enemy or Sometimes the same one, same enemy, something like that. They're always up against something evil. But with Turkish Delight, I love how he wrote that because it's something we want, something desirable. Sin is exactly that. Is always Sin is always something that you want, uh, a bent truth, um, some kind of lie, 
but it, it looks good. It probably tastes good, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, I wrote down, and Cameron's going to read it in Proverbs 5. What verse is it? One, well, it's 1 through 14. Go for it. So, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen closely to and my understanding. Real quick, the proverb is writing about um, a prostitute, adultery, that sort of thing. But just keep in mind just any sin because that's how it always presents itself. Mm -hmm. Anyway, keep going. Sorry. So that you may maintain discretion and your lips safeguard knowledge. Though the lips of the forbidden woman drip honey and her words are smoother than oil and the end she as, is as bitter as wormwood, as sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps head straight to Shiloh. She does not consider the path to life. She does not know that her ways are un unstable. So now, sons, listen to me, and do not turn away from the words from my mouth. Keep your way far from her. Do not get near the door of her house. Otherwise, you will give in to your vitality to others and your years to someone cruel. Strangers will drain your resources and your hard-earned pay will end up in, for, in a foreigner's house. At the end of your life, you will lament when your physical body has been consumed and you will say how I hate discipline and how my heart despises correction. I didn't obey my teachers or listen closely to my instructors. I am on the verge of complete ruin before the entire community. And that's so true. It's good. We, we, we have, there's a saying, God will give you the desires of our heart. Right. And I've hit on this several times, but it's not, Oh, I desire a Porsche. I desire a big house a fancy um, job, a beautiful wife, anything like that. It's like, no, God will give you the desires he places on your heart. That line up with his. Yes. This is talking about how we go from wisdom to sin real quick. And it says, don't even go down that same street. Don't walk by her house because you walk down that same path over and over. One day you're going to get complacent. She's going to walk out sin something you really want will walk out and will tickle your fancy have you come over just to talk then the next day you talk longer then the next day you might go out to lunch so on so forth it's always something so easy mm -hmm. it could be something just as like like you said you know you walk that same path every day and it's then it's clearly telling you to stay away from it, it could be it's just you you just you just smell her perfume mm-hmm yeah, and, that's, and that's, that's why I like how they brought that up. Because you look at like how they portray Turkish delight and how it really is in the real world. It's it's this little it's thing. Like coffee, right? It is. It, it's about. It's a little candy. Yeah, candy. it's about yay big with powdered sugar, and they say it's super sweet and all this stuff. But like, it's tempting. It's like super bad for you. It's got like all the sugar. Yeah, and <laughs> like you just keep eating. It's like a diabetic coma and yeah. like a one inch cube. Because it's one of those things you can't just have one of. Like it, it just gets on your tongue and you're just like, I want more. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why like if you go to. Like Doritos. Yeah. You can't eat like just Doritos. one. Like Doritos. I mean, I'm being honest. When I eat one of the, what's the purple bag? The spicy something. Sweet, Sweet chili. chili. Sweet chili. I, I'll eat the whole bag. Mm -hmm. Like I have, someone has to take it from me. I'm the same way with gummy bears. Gummy bears? Oh, yeah, That's your bag. Turkish delight? Hot, oh, man. My like, it's hot fries. What do you mean by hot fries? The crunchy hot fries? The crunchy hot fries. Yeah. Yellow bag? Like the talkie things? No, no it says hot fries. Oh, with the guy. Oh, yeah. Sideways. Little, little, little guy yeah. sideways with a flaming hair. He almost. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm it's thinking a blue of bag. A Mario. What's well, a yellow bag. bag? Anyway, so what is your Turkish delight? Right. Is my question for the listener. Hang on. <clears throat> oh, like, for, like as far as. Uh, yeah, so. so okay. Kind of think of what it is spiritually, like the, the thing you're stumbling, the sin. And like the proverb is saying, don't even go down that road. Mm -hmm. Like know what it is and be true with yourself and go the other way. And it goes back to discipleship too. have someone that you can tell, hey, this mm -hmm. is my stumbling block. Yeah. Can you help me with it? And a true mentor, disciple, friend, brother in Christ is going to be like, yeah, I'll right. help you. Yeah. Just like if by chance, if it is alcohol, if it's not alcohol, don't even go down the, the beer aisle. Don't go to the mm -hmm. bar. Yeah. If you have friends that drink. Don't hang out with them. Yeah, yeah. stay off. Stay off, well for me. Stay off the explore page. Yeah, on Instagram. I have to. I can't. 
Mm -hmm. for whatever reason because i guess instagram knows i'm a guy it's filth yep. it's so and it says it's like the algorithm like with your, who you follow i don't know my algorithm screwed up yep. I, I have to stay away from it but just before five you look at it's called the straight path in proverbs my son pay attention oh, to I my love, words i love when they talk about that listen closely to my sayings don't lose sight of them keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body guard your heart above all else for it is the source of life do not let your mouth speak dishonestly do not let your lips talk deviously let your eyes look forward fix your gaze straight ahead carefully consider the path for your feet and all the ways will be established do not turn to the right or to the left keep your feet away from evil mm -hmm. and you look at this in a good a good example in the new testament when peter steps out onto the water going towards Jesus. He looks and he's consumed by the wind and the rain and the waves. And he looks, he takes his eyes off straight forward Jesus mm -hmm. and he starts to fall. That's a good metaphor when it goes to avoiding seduction. Yeah. If we're not looking to the cross. Put on horse blinders if you have to. For real. It, it goes back to when Paul's talking about training for the race. Yeah. Everyone trains, but only one person wins. It's that one person who gives it its all. That's all they focus on. And that, that kind of goes back to, you know, like you're talking about aging out of Narnia. You know, you never get too old, really, because we need to always have that childlike faith where, like, that's all you think about. You know, like, mm -hmm. there's no distractions. So, you know, if once we go into level four, mm -hmm. uh, you'll never get too old. You know, I was thinking, because today was my day with the girls, I was thinking, like, both of them, when they get their mind on something, you cannot change their mind. And I don't know if it's just strong-willed girls or what, but like, no, we're not going to do that right now. We'll do it later. No, we're going to do it now. No, we're going to do it later. No, I want to do it right now. Marion, Marion, my youngest, she's two. She is so like, she doesn't care. I'll just go do it. That's like when we Harley, were if I say like, hey, we'll go to the park later. She's just so emotional and passionate. She just boo-hoos and balls and squalls. And I'm like, I didn't say no. I said later. But it's like teaching me right now. I'm looking at it as myself because I try to do that with the kids. It's like, okay, what is God trying to tell me through this? It's saying, I'm not saying no. I'm saying not right now. And so there's so many different prayers I'm praying through right now. That's what I was going to say. How are you praying? So it's how like, are you responding to exactly, your response to your prayer? Exactly. He's, he's telling me, I'm not saying no, I'm saying not just yet because I'm building it up. I'm, that, I'm planting some seeds. They go, and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier about uh, <clears throat> we're so used to everything being instant. Like, in, instant. Yeah. You know, like the, the drive through analogy, like, like that's, you know, really in a perfect comparison. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're in and out. Ideally, you know, two to five minutes. Yeah. Depending on that's what you want yeah, when you go through drugs. Depending where right. you go. But and then it's just it's our human back to our, our human instinct is we're so impatient. Mm -hmm. And so when you, you ask for you know, you, you pray and you pray and you pray up and you just you ask God to hey I, I this I need this. Yeah. Like show me, you know, what you know what I need to do and he doesn't do it right then then you're discouraged. Yeah. And you know, it's like not in your time, but in mine, that's when that faith comes in. It's like, no, exactly. he's trying to grow your faith in that season. Right. I don't know who this is for, but it just kind of hit me. Could maybe for me, maybe you're impatient, impatient because you don't truly know what patience is. Mm. We're so kids today, myself, my generation, all that we're, we're so used to getting everything. We don't know what it is to wait. Mm -hmm. I, of course I work at a farm store and all this and it's making me think of a farmer mm. they know patience they know they put out their seed they fertilize it they do all this but at the end of the day they have to wait until harvest they do all they can until they can't do anymore mm -hmm. and they've got to wait and, and it comes to a point where sometimes on a, that's stressful especially but, for a farmer but if someone who just got into farming didn't have patience or knew what patience were would they be impatient or would they be naive? Because they don't know that you have to wait. You can't do this thing every day in order for it to happen. Mm. You can't be out there when the fields are sopping wet because you've got 10 inches of rain in the past week and trying to put fertilizer down. Yeah, because what you're up. doing is you're tearing up the ground. So it's not being able to root. Yeah. Where a wise man knows, someone who knows patience, 
knows that, hey, it's raining, it's my time to rest. Mm -hmm. It goes back to when we pray. Sometimes we need to shut up and let God talk to us. Sometimes it's through the word or sometimes it's through our heart and to our spirit. Think about back when you were a pool boy. You know, like uh, that's so. No, I'm, be, I'm being very. He's serious. being very honest yeah. because because my personality be, is I gotta fix it, and Stevens is like, dude, chill out. Because we both worked at a, a water park. Steven still does, but you know, if ever the water was the pH was off, the chlorine's off, it's cloudy, all this sort of thing, it's like I, I come into it like, okay, how do I fix it? What do I do? I need to do, blah blah blah, and I, slowly I was more chill about it more relaxed and and patient about it but with water like steven's saying it's like okay do a tiny bit and wait see what happens okay do a little bit more and wait because if you try to over uh over now what if you try to overshoot the over over stimulate the water it's going to do the complete opposite and then you're in another problem i'm not saying this to hurt your feelings but i think that's such a good representation and i know we've talked about it like your very first book series into here Yes. Because you, oh, we've talked about it. You were so headstrong into doing it that you wanted mm-hmm. to do it then. And you look back and you're like, man, I could have done this, this, and this. And, and you I took that You took yeah. that time and you republished. Yeah. And that's something we all Writing, you have to be a patient person to write. But we sure. have to be a patient sure. follower. Because it's not yes. going to be, God can we gotta miraculously. Be sheep. We got to be sheep. Do something for you. 100%. Yeah. He can heal an illness instantaneously if it be in his will. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, sometimes it can take a couple years, yeah. a couple decades. And that builds a faith. I think um, instantaneous things doesn't build. Mm-hmm. We have a God of growing. I'll put that in my book, guys. And it's kind of a it's probably kind of a test of loyalty on his part, on God's part, too. Because like, if he gives you something so instant, then that's going to kind of... I guess take away from your prayer time because like if you keep if if he takes his time on giving you what you what you're praying for, you're gonna keep praying for it. You should, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, you should. And I think you know, like I said, like that's kind of his testing or testing our faith, testing our loyalty. Like, well, if if I give it to him now, there's there's no telling when is he going to stop praying. Yeah, there's no telling when they'll come to me again. What did our buddy Bryce say the other day in the truck? about not being able to do the next thing God said because you haven't done the first thing yeah. he told you to do. Yeah. Maybe if you're, you're, if you're like in a stuck position and you're like, God, I, you know, I'm trying to hear from you this and that. It's like, okay, what did, what was the last thing he told you to do? Go back to that and do that. Mm-hmm. And if you really don't know what that is, pray about it. And I guarantee you, he'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Where, where are we at? Asra. Oh, we're on. Uh, no, never, hang on. Hang not on. Not aging out. I don't know. Yeah, aging out. So one thing I wanted to say about that is um, we're never too old for fairy tale stories in that we can always, always mature in, in faith. And that there's always more that you can go deeper in, that you can um, truly, truly grow in. I think that's so cool about the way that God works is. Um, and I've said this in now, I, I don't know if I have said it on this podcast before. I know it's in one of my books, but imagine a white blank canvas is as far as you can see to the left, to the right, straight up. And it's down to your feet. As far as your vision can see is just white. And then imagine a small dot, the size of a needle of, of a black dot. That's how much you could ever really know about God in your lifetime. Mm. And not to say like, we shouldn't know God or study God. No, that's, we should ask because you, if you have a relationship with someone, you want to know everything about that person. Um, not to it just cause you love them so much. I mean, I want to know every, everything about God. Um, but that's how much you could really understand him because he's so vast. And so you can always go deeper and mature more and more and more. But having that childlike faith is, is really one of the most important parts to know that um, like the helmet of salvation you prayed over us earlier when we, before we started the podcast is, is the helmet of salvation is the knowledge that he has saved me and that he will save me. Mm-hmm. I think it's more of a future salvation that no matter what I go through, uh, like a helmet, I have this vision of salvation that whatever I'm going through, God will deliver me from that. And you look at the, the armor in which they were quoting, of course, they were quoting Roman armor. And when I think of Roman, I, I really think in the sense of a helmet, I think of like uh, Leonidas and uh, the Spartan helmet 
Oh, you think of a Corinthian style helmet? Yes. That's something because you are so focused. You might be able to see maybe right here, but you can't see your. Yeah. I mean, that's how most helmets are. Yeah. And you got to, you look at the old school, like Renaissance Knights and everything. They're. Oh, you you can't see anything with those helmets. Yeah. Except what you're fighting. But that's what it is. You got to keep your eyes focused. Yeah. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Because if you're about to joust someone and you look this way, you're going to miss that. Yeah. That joust coming straight towards you. You're done, son. You're done, son. All right. And, and, and it's something, too. Jesus tells us we must have faith like children. So yeah. we can't age out of that. Right. Because we go from faith to faith to faith. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we must remember we must have that faith like a child to know like this. Right. Un- I, I unshaking, think I'm, undying. I know yeah. my daughter sees me as a superhero. That it's like I do, too, Kimberly. <laughs> Thank you. But, like, that's what Jesus wants us. Like, yeah. That's Jesus, how he sees Jesus. us, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's how we're supposed to see him. It's like, Jesus, we just want you. We want you because you are Abba, yeah. and the, Father. Yeah, that, that's yeah. like the childlike faith. Like, like my, my daughter Kaylee, I know she probably seen me that way when she was little. Now it's just like, what's my flipping dad? <laughs> <laughs> you sound just like you know, her. I know, I know. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> it's like I'm at the pharmacy all over again. I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. But, you know, like, I think that's the childlike faith what he's touching on is that, you know, like, when you're, you know, you're her father, you're her everything, relies on you for everything, love, sustenance, food, shelter, clothing, Playmate, protection, protection, yeah. everything. You are her everything. Mm-hmm. Where when they, you know, quote, grow up. Anyway, when they grow up, you're not their everything anymore. And that's that. I think that's a lot of it is kind of what he's saying. That's a lot of uh, how we are with God. Mm-hmm. It's like we don't need you for everything, but a couple things. And the, and and that's that's what's really hard is you know that and that's what he he doesn't want you to be that way. He doesn't want yeah. you to be a selfish. Uh, I'm a, I'm a hate flipping, you. flipping teenager. Yeah, yeah flipping teenager, yeah. like where you know everything. And yeah. Man, like, that's, I already know. that's something on an, another podcast is being a a dumb teenage Christian. Yeah, I know, bro. Of like, yeah. of like, whatever, dad. Well, whatever, bro. I'm going to go listen to Skillet now. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> kind of go back to uh, Mike was talking about, you know, the white sheet and then the, the dot, you know, and that's how much we truly know. Like, it's kind of like having, you know, it says, have the faith of a child. Yeah. Have the curiosity of one as well. Cause they're always like, you know, yeah. asking this, questions. This, and this is like, I'm not a father, but I'm an uncle, you know, yeah. I have, you know, and little cousins and stuff like that. And well, when they get to the why stage, yeah, why, what, who, when, where, you yeah. know, you know, Marin's at the why stage now. And it's like, don't ignore them. Answer those questions. Answer, I, that's what I do. Yeah. I answer every single one. Cause it's so how, cause I, I want to see how far it'll go. <laughs> So it's like, you know, no, we need to do this. Why? Because this. Why? Because, and I just see how far she'll exactly. ask why until she'll give up. She doesn't ever give up. Well, it's like, it, 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 because it, I said so. But it's like, you know, you want to, we should have that, you know, when it comes to, you know, absolutely learning yeah. more about God, we should have the curiosity of a child as well. Like when he says something, like, okay, but, you know, why, yeah. when, what, who, you know, who done because it? Because this is a perfect said way. Faith is imagination matured. Back mm-hmm. to our Back old to, moniker. Back to episode one. Oh, I feel like Star Wars. Okay, it's boss battle. battle. Aslan. It's a circle. It's a circle. It's a circle of life. Lion King. Aslan <laughs> is depicted as a talking lion and is is described as the king of beasts, the son of the emperor over the sea, and the king above all high kings in Narnia. Which really cool, kind of like Vader. Uh, Aslan is Turkish for lion, and Turkish delight is in the book. Well, it's kind of some conspiracy kind of, theory. No, I mean, he probably named him Aslan because of that. Because mm-hmm. he couldn't name him Judah because that'd be too easy. Yeah. And Leon would be too bit, easy, too. A little bit on the nose. A little bit too much on the nose. Well, that's funny. King above all high kings. Who does that sound like? King of kings and lord of lords. Yeah. Wait, would that be Jesus? Yeah. Because maybe, that's what he is. Maybe on to something there, Cam. But it's so true. We look yeah. at, we too many people know Jesus as the good shepherd, but we don't look at him as Lord and King. The lion. He he is our king. He's our roaring lion who who's there to protect us, who gave himself for us. Mm-hmm. And we just want to follow him in as a shepherd. No, we mm-hmm. have to follow him as Lord. Like he is Lord over my life. Yeah. And sometimes it might get hard, but at the same time, a Lord looks out for his subjects, a good Lord. In which we serve. 
I mean, one I I love the depiction of Jesus Aslan in the the movies, the the line the witch and the wardrobe, the newer ones came out what two thousand six, mid two thousand, mid two thousand. Yeah. Something yeah. Like, but I love how they did him because every scene, at least for me, like I literally can see Jesus. Like I know it's Liam Neeson and it's a CGI line, whatever. But at, like every scene, I'm just like, that is Jesus. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. And something in the books, I don't know if they say it in the movies, but in the books, my favorite quote of all the books is Lucy asking Mr. Beaver, uh, which is such a funny intro to this, but there's talking animals in there. If you don't know Narnia, uh, Lucy's saying, then he isn't safe, said Lucy. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's king, I tell you. Mm. That he's not safe, but he's good. I love that quote about him because Jesus is not safe. Oh, no. But he's good. You look at the first martyr, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Like, he he's in there and he's telling the Pharisees they're wrong and they decide to stone him. And all he looks up and he's, he's he quotes Jesus on the cross. He sees heaven open before him and he said, Lord, forgive them for they not know what they do. Mm -hmm. Like, he's literally getting stones thrown at him to the point of death. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Father, forgive them. Yeah. And he recites yeah. like a quarter of the testament. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but it's true. Like you look at the beatitudes: blessed are the persecuted. Yeah, yeah. Like we won't be safe. No, we're, we're not going to be safe. No, faith isn't easy. But we'll be okay because he's good. Faith isn't easy. Uh, yeah, but we're, we're not lasting. safe, but we're okay. Mm -hmm. I'm writing that down. Yeah, y'all look at the notes. The <laughs> Lion of Judah prophecy. Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, all the prophecies leading up to him. And you look because six, seven hundred prophecies in the Old Testament and every each and every one of them point to Jesus. In fact, you look at the book of Matthew, it starts with the genealogy to prove that Jesus comes from Abraham, from David. And Matthew is written to the Jews. Mm -hmm. And it shows all the prophecies he fulfills. And he is the lion of Judah. He's our roaring lion mm -hmm. that steps in and takes over for us he, he's and I the love, king i love in narnia when he's uh goes to the white witch's castle who turns all kinds of creatures to stone and uh aslan breathes on them and they come back to life Ooh. it's it's, it's breath awesome. of life breathes life to into, into them yeah Ooh. and that happens after the stone table when the white witch kills she she's supposed to sacrifice edmund the one of the brothers and instead aslan says no you can sacrifice me instead if you haven't seen the the newer movies, watch it and like have Jesus and all this on mind. But he says, you know, no, you can kill me instead. And before they kill him, they shave his mane, which to a lion's mane is like his, his pride, pride. Yeah. His, his honor, all his glory. Is it kind of the same as them stripping him naked stripping and Jesus him naked and they mocking him with him. the king of the Jews? They, so. dra they drag him up to this stone table and the white witch kills him. And he dies, and a couple of days later, he comes back to life because the White Witch does, didn't know that the deep magic of uh, sacrifice will um, will break whatever kind of curse that she was putting on him, and that he'll come back to life. Mm -hmm. Really, in the whole thing of always winter and never Christmas, so the White Witch was in power for 100 years because Aslan was somewhere else, which is cool because, like Jesus, he'll let us go through wilderness seasons or different seasons um to kind of teach us lessons and different things like that and he is a good good line a good god he'll let those hundred years come by but when aslan comes back and aslan's on the move like we said in the very beginning um the white witch's power was waning was dying away and spring was coming well you look at it's the it's really the whole story is really cool you look at it biblically uh i think there's 400 years from the end of the old testament to the beginning of the new testament yeah from malachi to matthew mm -hmm. 400 years of silence mm -hmm. and then jesus comes on the scene fulfills all the prophecies and becomes our lion mm -hmm. and, and it's one of those things where what you said just it made me think, and I've kind of lost it, so I'm going to ramble for a second. But it goes back to what you were talking about, Aslan and Jesus and breathing on the stone. Mm -hmm. First, we see that in Genesis when God creates man and breathes life into his nostrils. That's the breath of God bringing life. Mm -hmm. And then we see that with Jesus when he looks at the, when he goes to the tomb of Lazarus. 
Of course, he doesn't breathe on Lazarus. He could. But he says, he op- they open the tomb and he says, Lazarus, arise and come out. And yeah. he comes out. You look at it when he goes to Jairus's house. On the way there, a woman who suffered with blood issues for 12 years comes, touches his him, and is instantly healed because of her faith. And he says, daughter. Okay. But he's going to a Jewish leader's house because he's had faith and he knows Jesus can heal his daughter. Well, in that time that he heals that woman, his daughter passes. Right. He goes in there. He tells everybody to leave except for the three disciples, the Jairus and his wife, and they go up. He kneels down at the bed, takes her by the hand, and says, little daughter, get up. Or little child, arise. And she comes back from the dead. He breathes that life of little child, get up. And that's what he does with us. When he comes out of that grave, he doesn't come as a meek, broken Savior. He comes as the Savior. He comes as the Lion. If you look at the animal kingdom, and it's something we're all taught from a very young age, what is the most fierce but yet wonderful creature in all of the kingdom? Dragon. King of the jungle. Sorry. Lion. Lion. We're all taught they are the most fierce. I think of The Lion King. I think of Edinburgh. That sweet British guy who talks about on all nature documentaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he talks. The majestic lion. But it's so true. You talk about it lion. Yeah. A lion looks amazing. But at the same time, if you make it mad, it's going to thrash you. Very wrathful. And it's to a point where our lion, he looks awesome. He loves us. But when it comes to the end and we have to choose him or something else. The people who choose something else is going to get thrashed. Yeah, no doubt. Choose the lion. Choose the lion, man. Follow the lion. All right. We're laying in the plane. Y'all ready? <sighs> Level one was inklings. The group that you're in, I mean, who your friends, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That 100%. Quote, that's, that's perfect to add there. Level two was the wardrobe. There's a lot of different ways into Narnia. There's a lot of things that we can escape from our reality or our trauma and just ask yourself, what are you escaping to and what are you escaping from? And please let it be Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, level three is sons and daughter, sons of Adam and daughters of Eve, that we are heirs to the kingdom of heaven. And level four is Turkish delight. All sin is, is sweet. It tastes good, but it will turn to gravel in your mouth. And something that I wanted to add, uh, and I'm just now remembering it, that there is no sin that only affects you. Sin always Amen. affects everyone around you too. Amen. Maybe yes, maybe not right then, but it will sooner or later. Yeah, mm. that's mostly for me. So oh, level that's, that's definitely yeah. my sin. I don't know, my, my sin affects family, my family, all I my mean, friends. Every sin we think it only affects us because sin is always selfish, but it always will affect everyone. And that's it, selfish. Yeah, we think it's just us, but it's all those around us. Man, you come out with both finger guns. Pew, pew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So level five, uh, you're never too old to go into Narnia, and uh, we should never be grow out of our childlike faith and just um, like Chris was saying, that childlike wonder. I mm-hmm. loved that. And to add to that is is just always wanting a deeper relationship with God and just always asking why. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. Mm. Like a lion. Uh, boss battle was Aslan and he is not safe but he's good and we are not promised to be safe we're prom- promised persecution but he is good so thank you so much for listening check us out on Facebook all that stuff podcasts YouTube t-shirts like share comment my books uh, yeah Reach go out. watch Narnia yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good night good, good night, night God, God bless, bless. Thank you so much for listening to the Nerds in Christ podcast. Our goal is always to give glory and honor to God in all things and share the love and light of Christ everywhere.